This is Carolina Business Review. Major support provided by Colonial Life, providing benefits to employees to help them protect their families, their finances, and their futures. High Point University, the premier life skills university focused on preparing students for the world as it is going to be. Sunoco, a global manufacturer of consumer and industrial packaging products and services with more than 300 operations in 35 countries. In the dead heat of the summer last year, this was a bit lost. It was July 2023. Global news organization Bloomberg reported, and I want to quote this to get this right, for the first time since the government started tracking it, six southern states, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, and Texas, are contributing more to the nation's gross domestic product than that of the Northeast. Bloomberg went on to call it a $100 billion wealth migration tilting the U.S. economic center of gravity south. Thank you for watching the most widely watched and longest running program on Carolina business, policy, and public affairs seen every week across the Carolinas for more than three decades. On this program, we will unpack what that data may mean for the Carolinas. And we go to the top of the economic development machine. South Carolina Secretary of Commerce joins us again, the Honorable Harry Lightsey, and the dialogue starts right now. Major funding also by Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association, and Martin Marietta, a leading provider of natural resource-based building materials, providing the foundation on which our communities improve and grow. On this edition of Carolina Business Review, an executive profile featuring Harry Lightsey III, South Carolina's Secretary of Commerce, Hello, welcome again to our program. Your Honor, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time, sir. Well, it's great to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to, Mr. Secretary, I want to start with that. It's a, rattling, a rather startling statistic. It was kind of buried in the summer uh, uh, in the Carolinas. You know, nobody's really paying attention to business. But this idea that certainly the Carolinas for a long time have held themselves out as a better place to live, better quality of living, better place to do business, et cetera, et cetera. And lo and behold, after all of the years of pushing on that, it turns out that the southern states are the center of gravity for the U.S. now. It's no longer the Northeast. So is, uh, are we, the, are we the, the proverbial dog that caught the car now? now? Now what do we do? Do we need to think differently? Is there another set of rules? Well, I think, I mean, of course, the world is always changing, and so we have to react to those changes as they occur. But the South has uh, uh, been very successful. In fact, uh, just uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, new census data came out, and uh, in the last year, 22-23, uh, South Carolina was the fastest growing state in the entire country. So we have more in migration into South Carolina uh, per capita than any other state in the country. So the South is where people are moving, pe where people want to be, and uh, that's certainly very exciting. How, how do you keep an eye on, I don't want to call it the dark part of that, sir, but how do you make sure that with that kind of growth and in migration, which is pretty spectacular, and thanks for sharing that, is, is the then it becomes an affordability question, is the cost of living question. It's the, the, the rise in energy prices because of all of this. H how, do you, how do you balance that? How do you make sure that that doesn't get out of control for the, for the narrative that you need to have? Well, I mean, the growth is occurring, so we, we get to deal with that. Um, and, you know, it, it, uh, certainly infrastructure is very important. There's a lot of building going on in South Carolina and across the South. Uh, we are we're doing a lot with uh, water and sewer. The General Assembly has invested uh, billions of dollars in, in extending uh, water and sewer systems and road work. Uh, and uh, so there continues to be a lot of infrastructure build in South Carolina. That's very important. Our cost of living is still very uh, low relative to other parts of the country. And uh, I think uh, our policymakers want to keep it that way. We'll continue to be a low-tax state and a pro-business state, 
And I think those are characteristics that will set us up for growth in the future. Uh, Columbia Mayor Rickman in your hometown, Columbia Mayor Rickman made, made the point that they, he would like, you talk about taxes, he would like the counties, Richland County in, in this case, to have more control over taxing businesses. Is there, does the South Carolina tax code need a relook? Does it need to be reformed in that way? Well, it's, that's a little bit beyond what we do at the South Carolina sure. Department of Commerce, but uh, you know there are policymakers that are calling for a relook at the uh, at the South Carolina tax code. Uh, there are parts of uh, our tax code that are a uh, little bit out of step with our neighboring states uh, in terms of property taxes for businesses, certainly. Uh, so uh, you know that's that's something that uh, policymakers may decide to look at. You know, they've been aggressively reducing the income tax rate in South Carolina for the last several years, which is very good for us uh, and very good for our citizens. And so I think uh, the legislature certainly understands uh, that being uh, a low tax state is very important. And I think that policy will continue. As, as we talked about, as we started this dialogue off, sir, we, we talked about the incredible growth and in migration and challenges. South Carolina Department of Commerce recently is rebranding and it's in a new strategic framework. And I'll, I'll use the term from your own website. Why now when you've got so much momentum and arguably one of the best years on record was, was last year to the end of last year? Yeah, so actually the last two years have been by far the best years in terms of announcements of, of new investments and new jobs being created in South Carolina. And that's, that's great. But the world is changing and is changing rapidly. We're seeing technologies like uh, AI and robotics, uh, digitization, uh, all of these uh, different mega trends that are all occurring at simultaneously. And so, you know, we're seeing uh, transformation in a lot of industry sectors. The automobile sector, which is incredibly important to South Carolina, is changing from the internal combustion engine to the battery electric vehicle. The biggest change that industry sector has undergone since the days of Henry Ford. Uh, and we're seeing similar changes in areas like uh, biotech uh, with the new genetic and molecular uh, research that's going on there. Uh, so the world is changing fast. And we uh, thought that our brand, which has been around for about 11 years, mm -hmm. uh, has really kind of uh, been a great brand and has worked well. But we felt like we wanted to take a, a, a strong look at where we were and where we were going. Uh, we wanted to uh, show that we we're kind of embracing this change, embracing the future. Uh, we felt like we wanted a brand uh, that told uh, people from around the world that are looking at South Carolina, that South Carolina is a place when you invest in South Carolina, you grow. You grow as a business, you grow personally, and you, your community grows. Uh, when you're in, uh, put uh, investment in South Carolina, uh, you are uh, part of building the new economy, and we're embracing that. And that uh, South Carolina is the new home of American innovation. So those are all messages we wanted to send through our new brand. Our, our uh, line is Launch the Legacy. Yeah. It contains the promise that if you come to South Carolina, you'll have our support, uh, the support of all of our state, uh, from the moment you launch until you become a legacy business. You know, that's an important promise that we make to our businesses. We take that very seriously. Uh, we take our commitments very seriously and we, we strive to meet all of those commitments. I, the launch to legacy tagline is interesting and the idea that you want to be, a, and, and, and sir, this is, this is the way that I, I decipher it, the idea that you want to be a center of excellence around innovation. Is that about technology? Is that about the aerospace and the automotive industry? How do you, where do you put the stake in the ground to say, this is what this means? Yeah, so uh, coincident with the, the rebranding effort, you already mentioned it, we've, we did some uh, strategic planning. Uh, we did some thinking about where we wanna go in the future. Uh, and that's a, really the first time we've done that in uh, several decades. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, was, it was something that was uh, timely. Uh, of course, manufacturing is the bread and butter of the South Carolina economy, and it will continue to be so. And we'll continue to grow our manufacturing and, and hopefully uh, bring new companies and manufacturing to South Carolina. I'm very happy uh, where we are with the automobile industry. 
Uh, we've uh, had some companies make some ser very serious uh, investments in, in embracing the mm -hmm. future of the battery electric vehicle. Scout Motors uh, announced that they're going to uh, make their home in South Carolina right outside of Columbia, between Columbia and Charlotte on I-77. Uh, that is a whole new uh, brand, an American brand, iconic American brand that's being reinvigorated and brought to life in a, in a new world of uh, battery electric vehicles. So we're excited about that. We've had uh, BMW also announce a significant investment to begin to produce uh, battery electric vehicles at their facility in Greer. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of investments in that space. So we've, we feel great about that. Aerospace, which is another important sector to South yeah. Carolina. Boeing makes the 787 in Charleston. Lockheed Martin makes the F-16 fighter jet in Greenville. And uh, we're starting to see a strong recovery in the aerospace sector. Uh, we feel like after several years of being down, that sector is starting to really start to grow. Uh, biotechnology is one of the new sectors that we really want to stress. North Carolina has been very successful in that area. We think we can be too. It's been a, uh, one of the fastest growing sectors in South Carolina for the last couple of years, but we really want to emphasize that as we go forward. Advanced energy is another sector that we really want to stress going forward. If you think about it, as we are now moving away from fossil fuel as our source of energy, for the first time, really since uh, two cavemen rubbed a couple of sticks together uh, a, few, a few thousand years ago, uh, we've been relying on fossil fuel, and now we're moving away from that in, in a number of different directions. And uh, that is really creating a whole new uh, level of, of creativity and innovation in the energy sector, you know, a sector which really has been based on uh, a technology that was invented over a hundred years ago by uh, Tesla and Westinghouse, and now we're seeing a whole new look at how that's going to happen. Uh, South Carolina applied for a status as a tech hub in advanced energy uh, to the U.S. Uh, Department of Commerce. We were very uh, excited to be designated by the U.S. Department of Commerce as one of the 31 tech hubs in the United States. Only five of those are, face, are, are focused on energy along with us. And uh, that means that the U.S. Department of Commerce believes that we have the assets in place to be a global leader in advanced energy in the next 10 years. And we'll have mm -hmm. the full support of the uh, United States government as we uh, begin to uh, work to uh, advance in that sector as well. So we're excited about that. And then finally, uh, headquarters, white collar jobs, R&D is a space that we think we can be very competitive. Uh, yesterday, I was in uh, Fort Mill and Continental Tires, uh, which has been in our state for since 2009, uh, unveiled their new headquarters building which is an incredibly beautiful building and, and a, a real statement in terms of what headquarters can look like in the future. And so, uh, especially in the region around Charlotte, uh, headquarters is uh, very appealing because of the connectivity you have with the Charlotte airport. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we think that the, with our low cost of living, our great quality of life, uh, we can be very competitive in that space too. You know, let me let me go back to this whole idea about innovative energy, and I'm probably not saying that right, sir. But so on on, the, on this program, uh, actually, the CEO of Santee Cooper, Jimmy Staten, and Keller Kassam at, at Dominion have both said that w there's a looming energy crisis in the Carolinas, and not just South Carolina, but North Carolina faces that. So does I'm I'm assuming there were strategic conversations going on within commerce, but also uh, around the state, around this whole idea of providing enough energy going forward that, number one, it continued to be a low cost resource. But is that what's, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, sir, but is that what's behind some of this, this being an energy innovation hub? Well, that's part of it. Uh, certainly, uh, we want to make sure that our citizens have access to reliable and low cost energy uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. And with our growth, you know, that presents uh, uh, some challenges. We talk to our utilities about that. Our tech hub is really focused on being a global leader in commercializing new technologies, new products uh, in the energy space. And uh, to the extent that helps us in South Carolina, as well as being able to uh, 
to put those products around the country and around the world, you know, that's, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll continue to do that. You know, we think uh, in our application that we uh, made to the U.S. Department of Commerce for uh, funding phase two uh, grants, uh, we stated that we think the energy grid is moving uh, very quickly into a new world of distributed energy resources. If you think about solar, uh, offshore wind, and uh, the potential, you know, in the future of uh, small modular nuclear reactors mm -hmm. as energy sources, zero carbon energy sources. But those are all going to be, they're not gonna be in huge big generating plants like we've seen to date. Uh, they're gonna be spread out across the, the territory of the grid and they'll be able to contribute to the grid uh, from uh, wherever they are. And the grid has to be able to adapt to those new technologies. It has to get a lot smarter. It has to have the ability mm -hmm. to receive energy from multiple different sources uh, and be able to efficiently move that around to meet the needs. Where, where, where are there geographic centers, like Clemson, USC, College of Charleston, academically based? Where do you hope to have those centers located? Yeah, so our tech hub is called SC Nexus. It is a, a coalition of uh, 40 different uh, types of entities. Mm -hmm. uh, both of our research universities, uh, University of South Carolina, Clemson University, are part of our tech hub. Uh, it's also uh, the Savannah River National Laboratory, uh, which is uh, in South Carolina, is part of our coalition as well. And they have a long history and expertise in, in uh, nuclear energy uh, and other, other areas as well. Uh, and then uh, South Carolina State is part of our tech hub. They have the only nuclear engineering program of any HBCU in the country. Um, and we have other HBCUs as, as well. Our tech colleges are part of our coalition and our K-12 education system is part of that. So it's a, it's a grounds up look in terms of building workforce with the skill sets to be employable in this area. It's also uh, looking at entrepreneurship and having uh, companies uh, start mm -hmm. in this area, but also established companies. We've got a number of companies that are already in South Carolina that are doing work in this area. Companies like GE and Rolls-Royce, uh, and they're part of our, our tech hub as well. It runs uh, technically uh, the designated area, runs from the upstate through the Midlands over to uh, the western side of our state, Aiken uh, and, a, and a North Augusta, where the uh, Savannah River uh, National Laboratory is. But we think it's gonna benefit the whole state, and uh, we're really excited about the potential. That, as you well know, some of the biggest challenges are education, affordable housing, and just finding people to fill the jobs. So when, when Scout announced uh, in the Midlands, North Columbia area, as, as you know, um, how, how do you address those issues about still keep the cost of living? How do you find the workers? How do you make sure that, you call it workforce housing, but how do you directly address that and use the very large pulpit that you have to do that? Yeah, so uh, Columbia for Scout was really uh, the last uh, main, mainly untapped uh, labor pool uh, in the Southeast. And that was a, a big attraction for them. The whole Midlands or North Columbia? Well, uh, the whole Midlands. And okay. uh, they, they look at uh, people within a, an hour drive of, of their facility. They consider that uh, the eligible labor pool for their, uh, for their uh, factory there that they're building. Mm -hmm. um, so that uh, was largely untapped. Uh, and, and they uh, were very attracted to that. Uh, and so that's a big part of it. Uh, the growth that we talked about earlier, that's a big part of the equation. We have people mm -hmm. coming to uh, South Carolina to uh, fill these jobs. Uh, we're also very blessed in South Carolina that we've got six major military institutions uh, and we have a very active uh, program to recruit those uh, uh, military personnel that are transitioning out of the military into civilian life to uh, recruit them to stay in our state. Um, the legislature passed several years of law, law 
that allows uh, military veterans to receive their uh, benefits mm -hmm. without having to pay any taxes on those uh, military benefits, which is significant mm -hmm. for them. And, and so uh, we feel, uh, and military uh, uh, personnel make great employees and they're uh, wonderful for the companies who uh, bring those people into their companies. You know, they understand uh, the discipline necessary to be a productive employee. So uh, that's a big piece of the puzzle as well. Uh, our education system, as we said, we're working uh, with students now uh, in the K-12 system all the way into middle school. And you're moving that needle enough with the technical schools as well? Absolutely. Uh, we've invested a lot of money in the technical colleges and in many cases, and especially in some of the higher demand uh, needs and skill sets, mm -hmm. uh, you can go to a technical college for free in South Carolina and get those skill sets and be employable you know, very quickly in a couple of years. So that's, uh, that's great. We're also uh, working with our higher uh, universities uh, across the state, uh, our four-year colleges, uh, to, because there are higher level skill sets that are being demanded uh, by our businesses mm -hmm. as they uh, work in these areas like AI, like robotics uh, and digitization, you know, software skills are very important. Uh, and so uh, we're working with uh, schools at, at all levels to help our students acquire those mm -hmm. skills to be employable. Um, going back to the industrial portfolio of South Carolina, as you talked about the automotive and aerospace sectors for sure, and when issues, corporate issues like Boeing is facing right now can impact sites like the South Carolina site. I don't necessarily, I'm not asking you about that, but does the idea of a, a portfolio that's, that's very large in a few industries has that driven the strategic framework rethink? Is that a risk going forward? Are you hope, hopeful that the next five or 10 or 20 years is going to alleviate that, that and diversify from that? Yeah, well, I, Chris, I grew up in, in South Carolina in the 60s and 70s, and uh, we really watched our textile industry, which was the basis of our economy. Sure. Uh, all those jobs leave our state uh, and really was devastating to a number of communities across our state. Uh, and we were very reliant on that one industry sector. And I think ever since then, we've, we tried to learn from that and to have a diversified base. You know, manufacturing is the, the, the base of the South Carolina economy, uh, but we have a diversified manufacturing uh, uh, portfolio. As you mentioned, automobile, which is important, employs 75,000 uh, South Carolinians. Aerospace is another big sector, but we also have multiple other uh, types of uh, manufacturers mm -hmm. in our state, and it's a very diversified portfolio. But you're correct, as we looked forward, we wanted to target a couple of sectors that we feel are going to be position us for growth in the future. And so that we're not uh, caught in that, uh, in that uh, problem that we experienced back in the 60s and 70s where we're watching jobs uh, move out of our state uh, uh, to somewhere else. So the, pa the pain of that is still driving force behind the redevelopment. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we've got about two minutes left and, and I wanna go back to the idea of the strategic framework. Is there a, was there a consideration for an increased um, expansion into collaboration with states like North Carolina in, in, in competing, yes, but also, are there other areas, and I know I've asked this question a thousand times, but are there areas that the states could work together to be a Carolina and, and put on a united front? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, we've built a great relationship with uh, Secretary Sanders mm -hmm. and with uh, Chris Chung uh, here in, in North Carolina. Uh, there are great opportunities. Charlotte is a region uh, that really straddles uh, both states. Uh, the Charlotte Airport uh, technically is in North Carolina, uh, but it's right across the border, but it's truly an asset for, for both of our states. Uh, and uh, so they're great opportunities uh, for, for us to work together to really push this whole region, to get people to understand uh, that uh, this whole region is really well positioned for a number of different types of, uh, of investments. 
If, in a minute, uh, if the state revenue has been has has created a, a budget surplus for several years now, if South Carolina's revenue levels off, or if the economy gets slow, is there a is there a model in in that you planned for? And we have about 45 seconds. Yeah, so we really don't plan for that. Uh, <laughs> South Carolina, we believe South Carolina's positioned for strong, like growth, your attitude. <laughs> strong growth in the future. And as, as our governor says, our state is booming, our economy is booming, and uh, we really see that continuing. Uh, Mr. Leitzer, you're always kind to come up and actually sit in the studio and join us. Uh, so best of luck going forward. The rebranding uh, seems to be moving forward. Best of luck to you and, and the crew in South Carolina. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having, or thank you for being here. Thank you for watching our program. If you have any questions or comments or you'd like to rewatch this show or share it, you can. CarolinaBusinessReview.org is the website. Until, ni until next week, I'm Chris William. Hope your spring is off to a good start. Thank you for supporting and watching. Good night. Gratefully acknowledging support by Martin Marietta. Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, Sunoco, High Point University, Colonial Life, and by viewers like you. Thank you. For more information, visit carolinabusinessreview.org.